people from up and down the country coming on to uh, listen to my um, my Dragon's Den um, Finance Innovation, which is um, I've been kindly invited along by one one NHS Finance to um, kind of talk to you about this today. So um, my name is Kate Sands, and I'm head of charity at Portsmouth Hospitals Charity. So. Um, many of you will work in NHS trusts, I'm sure, and you may well also have, um, I'm sure, some charities attached to your to your trust, or you may well be from your trust charity. But this is an innovation that came about through the charity, but I think could have um, kind of multiple uses across NHS trust finance teams. So I'm just trying to get the slides to move along. There we go. Are we on the next one? Yep. Who are we? Should have a who are we slide? Let's come on. Um I, I can't see that you're on the next slide. Ah. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else <laughs> can't see the next slide either. No, it's not moved on for me. Does that work? Uh, no, I still can't <laughs> see the next That's slide. Oh, there we go. There we go. I can see it now. OK, is that all on? Is, have you got the whole slide on your page? Yes. Oh, well, it's sort of in the in your view, not the that works? <laughs> no. Would you like me to? Would you like yeah, me to share that? that? Works. Yeah. Might be because I'm not. Um, yeah. If you don't mind sharing. Yeah. Sorry, no I'll problem. Be. Two seconds. But then not the rest of them. Um, I'll just give you a bit of background anyway, whilst um, we're getting those up. So, Portsmouth Hospitals um, Charity, we're the partner charity to Portsmouth Hospitals University NHS Trust. So, we um, kind of officially started with that name in 2015. Um, but preceding that, we had a lot of charitable funds. Um, so we've got around 60 or so charitable funds. Um, they're anything ranging from, um, we've got a large renal function here and um, a large oncology function, as you'd imagine. Um, but then we go right down to, we've got a fund for orthodontic equipment, which I think has got about hundred pounds in it. So we've got with a typical chari hospital charity, we've got lots of different, um, different funds. Um, and we were preceded as well um, before we became Portsmouth Hospitals Charity by something called the Rocky Appeal. So we had a major appeal, which um, I know many other hospital charities have done for um, uh, the first surgical robot that came to Portsmouth. And now we're actually um, a kind of centre of excellence for robotic surgery. So the charities had quite a history within the within the trust in terms of bringing us um, bringing us to this day. So if we just go on to the next slide. That's OK. Yeah, so can everyone see that? Who are we? Brilliant, that's great news. Um, so just to give you a bit of background of our trust, we serve um, 675,000 residents across Portsmouth and South East Hampshire. We've got local community sites as well. So we've just opened up a dialysis centre in Fairham. We were also doing chemotherapy there. Um, so we have also about 5,000 births a year as well. So we're kind of quite a large trust on the on the South Coast. Um, for us as a charity, we're quite medium sized. So we're about um, a million pound a year um, charity. Obviously, our purpose is for the relief um, and benefit of patients treated at our hospital site. Um, as you will know from other charities, we must fund things that go above and beyond, uh, beyond NHS standard, but we can also pump prime things. So we're roughly a million pound a year charity. So that kind of gives you a little bit of the background um, of who we are. So if we go on to the next slide, please. I feel like Chris Whitty now. He was doing those things. <laughs> so um, what problem were we trying to solve? How did we get to the Dragon's Den and the finance innovation, which I want to present today? So within our charity, obviously, we've got a lot of these designated funds. So they're funds that are given to certain departments or wards, such as oncology, paediatrics, as you'd imagine. We also have started to increase what we call our working together fund. So that's a fund which is unrestricted, can be used across the hospital. Um, we have started to use that fund to fund more of the core costs of the charity. So we're less reliant on the the funds but um but we also wanted to show people actually if they give to the hospital more generally how can their money um be used in the hospital because we obviously don't want to just tell people oh if you give generally to our hospital it kind of funds the charity's costs we want to make sure we're putting some of that money to really good use for our patients so we agreed with our board of trustees that we'd invest fifty thousand pounds of that fund um to fund projects across the hospital now it's at this point I think, okay, uh, so I'm I sit in the charity team, I'm corporate services, I it's a large acute hospital. There's any number of projects that we could we could look at to enhance patient care. So how are we going to do this 
it's not really up to me to kind of decide where to spend that money because I wouldn't necessarily know where to start. So we decided that the best thing to do was to go out to our staff to try and get them to come to us with ideas. Um, so in July 2022, so last year, we decided that we would just launch a really simple application form asking um, for ideas. They could go up to a maximum of £20,000 per bid. We thought that we would have enough probably to do one larger bid if we needed to, um, but a minimum of £1,000. Um, we had a deadline in August. We gave people about a month. After that, people have lost the emails. They're not probably going to reply by that point. We made it clear that it had to be something that the NHS wouldn't normally be able to fund. So um, the great thing about the process was obviously we had a lot of ideas come forward. I'll go on to how many in a minute. Um, but we also um, had people come to us. Um, it sparked ideas of things that there'd been st staff members in the trust that have had an idea for many years, but have, have never, ever been able to um, implement it, particularly coming out of COVID. There was a lot of things that people had wanted to do, but had been put on the back burner. And now there was kind of this pot where they could they could use to you know use something to enhance their patient care. And I think some of those people would never have come forward had we not launched the idea. Um, the other unexpected benefit that we found was because we also have these designated pots of money, which do have, um, you know, some of them have quite considerable amounts of cash in. We needed to find a way to spend those. Now we've got fund holders who would spend them, but there were ideas that came forward from members of the team in our oncology, our paediatrics, who then um, we could use the fund to fund those ideas, which meant we didn't even have to dip into this pot to do that. So it had some added benefits as well. So if we go on to the next slide. So what happened? Um, we launched the Dragon's Den, really simple application form. We've got a charity news email we send out, goes to all staff in the hospital. We also included it in our hospital's trust talk. So our comms team do a weekly trust talk. Um, and we also have a team brief every month, a get on teams led by the um, chief executive of the hospital. So I appeared on there just to kind of plug this to some of our um, some of our staff in the, to reach those kind of se particularly senior leaders actually um, are on that call. So we direct, direct to people to the web page um, with more details of the initiative. I wonder if there's um I think there's someone not oh there we go. Um someone not on mute but there we go thank you. Um so we directed them to a page and included the types of things that could be considered. So we gave them some examples of projects that the charity had funded previously. So we asked people very simply how much um, they wanted to apply for, what did they want to spend, spend that money on, why were they going to do it, what was the benefit and how does it meet our criteria. So it has to be around patient care or staff wellbeing, which the staff wellbeing piece then has to influence um, a kind of enhancement to patient care. If we go on to the next slide, please. So by the deadline, we'd had 58 applications, which was nearly £400,000 worth of, of ask from our, from our staff, um, which obviously was well above um, the amount of money that we had in the pot. So we always knew we would not be able to say yes to everybody. But then we had to go through a process of um, understanding and unpicking some of those project ideas. So we went back to the application, uh, applicants with additional questions. And that was anything from ranging from understanding the kind of additionality to NHS core business to any ongoing cost implications. Um, many of you will know from your internal charities that we can fund things up front, but we can't fund ongoing costs. The trust will take on um, any of the projects that we fund. So we need to make sure that the trust is in a position to carry on with that funding. Um, and we also, as part of that, obviously identified things that we just um, wouldn't be able to fund. Some of the projects that came forward were around, you know, more staff lockers, for example, staff changing areas. They're not the kinds of things that the charity would necessarily be able to fund. Um, but then also, as I've mentioned, we got a lot of ideas that came forward from um, areas of the, the well, areas of the hospital which have got charitable funds already. We then um, used a scoring system to prioritise all of the remaining projects that we had. Um, we had four different criteria um, that we used and we would give each project a, a score out of five. So really, because this was, um, if we call it a dragon's den, we really wanted to kind of try and look at innovation, doing something that was new to the trust. So not something that we'd done a uh, kind of million times before. Um, additionality, clearly that's that's important for the charity, so benefits above and beyond NHS provision. Um, value for money, we were clear that, you know, some of the projects that came forward 
looked brilliant and would take probably quite a lot of the funding, but they would only reach a very small number of patients. So over time they would reach many, but actually on a monthly, yearly basis, the numbers that they would reach were quite small. So we did look at how much value for money we would gain from the projects we selected. And then storytelling. So because of the fact we wanted to use these projects to demonstrate the difference that unrestricted funding to the hospital could make, we really wanted to um, have a kind of good story as a result of the projects that we were funding. So that also was really important. So if we go on to the next slide, please. So what we ended up with after our scoring and all our questions and you know looking with our estates teams at some of the estates projects we managed to get down to 11 projects which still exceeded the overall total money available we we just explored those in even more detail so at that point i was meeting face to face with the applicants across the hospital understanding needs in more detail and particularly the budgetary requirements so that by the time we get to the pitch, we know that the amount of money that we're asking for is going to be pretty much spot on. And then we ended up with a final list of eight projects to pitch to our dragons. Um, and of the three projects that didn't make it to the pitch stage, we're still um, still progressing further for funding from other areas. And actually, we've just literally the last couple of weeks signed off one of those um, projects that didn't make it to the pitch stage. that We'll receive funding from other other funds that we've got in the hospital. Um, so we put all the projects into quite a detailed information booklet, which was available to our to our dragons um, a week before the pitches. So um, on a monthly basis, we do have a charity assurance committee, which is attended by some of our executives. And so um, we kind of we used one of those um, meetings to have the uh, kind of face to face pitches. But I've made sure that they had information available on all of the projects in terms of the additionality, what we were trying, the problem we were trying to solve what it would do to enhance patient care, as well as all the budgetary requirements. So we were pretty clear by that point what we were asking for. Um, so I briefed all of the um, staff members who were coming. Um, there was a mix of real confidence and a bit of nervousness amongst the staff that were coming to pitch, but it was kind of a brilliant opportunity for staff across the hospital to, from all kinds of walks of life, all kinds of different departments to come and actually meet our execs face to face and show them their idea and um, tell them how they um, how they felt about how their idea would enhance patient care. And it was um, on the day, it was absolutely brilliant because all the staff were excellent. The way they spoke about the difference that they felt they could make to our patients by using their enhanced projects was just incredible. It was really, really inspiring. And of course, we had a panel which included our chief financial officer, our chief nurse and director of comms and engagement. And as execs, they they do have exposure through the charity, some of these projects. But this was a real opportunity to kind of hear from our staff, real, you know, face to face an opportunity they don't often often get. So it was a really, really great afternoon to listen to the, um, the project pitches. So if we just go on to the next slide, please. So I thought I would just talk you through some of the approved projects um, that we ended up with um, to fund through the charity. So the first one was enhancing our surgical pathway for those with learning disabilities. So we sought funding um, through this project. Um, the funding would include, um, uh, we're actually not going to put a hoist in, but TV covered sensory equipment and sleeper chairs for a very specific room that we've identified on site. Now, this project, the funding was needed for those things, but actually, it was interesting because with this project, what the staff member really needed was for me to influence um, the execs and influence um, other uh, parts of the um, parts of the trust, such as our estates team, to identify a room on site where they could have this surgical pathway, a room that could be booked out when we've got a patient um, with um, learning difficulties or learning dis uh, disabilities to come in and to know that they can be seen. Because often the thing that the staff member spoke us through was um, you know, for elective surgery, these patients, often their journey into the hospital is quite stressful. They have a number of carers with them. Um, it's, it's really good to be offering um, that room and that place where they can go, where they can, you know, a carer can stay with them and that they can have some sensory items. It just means that there's less chance that they will be nervous for their surgery. Um, so it's um, that's a brilliant project. We've um, we're just about to buy all the um, equipment for that, and also we've it took a while to identify the room, the space on site. So there are you know it was if we're looking at estates projects, there were a few challenges with how long it took, um, but that will be a really good um, facility. And 
I think almost one of its kind actually um, from, what I'm, from what I've heard from the team so that would be a great project. Um, the second one was the Lumini digital retroscope so this equipment um, can bring formal endoscopic level imaging to the bedside outpatient department theatre so this was something that will relieve pressure on our endoscopy department it was something an idea that came from um, a consultant and through our lead cancer nurse um, they actually had the, the um, piece of equipment there. I'm glad they didn't do a live demonstration of this because it's not it's not the sort of thing you'd want to um, to see live. But um, obviously, it was great that they had the piece of kit and they could talk us through the difference that this would make. So, um, and this is kind of where I think this idea could be spread into other areas of finance in trust. I was approaching it very much from a charitable perspective, but this bit of kit is an innovation that will save time in other areas of the trust. And it occurred to me when I was looking at some of these projects, some of them are real nice to haves, but there are some of them that will have um, a positive revenue impact um, on the trust services in the future. And so that was something that I felt there could be a, a kind of idea there for almost, you know, a cost improvement saving project, innovation project within trust that could be run sort of along the same lines but start to come with actually I see this huge amount of waste in our department, or I see how a system could be brought in to perhaps fix some of these problems that we have. So it, I just felt that this was a kind of example of something that it is an innovation. It wouldn't have probably had money elsewhere, but it could be something that if you can prove the revenue costs could be an innovation, an innovation fund in a trust that could, could use this sort of thing. Um, the third project was a dementia friendly inpatient x-ray room. So this is something that a member of staff had seen um, Southampton Hospital do so our kind of neighbours just down the road um, and you know our inpatient x-ray rooms really really kind of very clinical quite unfriendly um, and they had seen this innovation elsewhere um, so what we did um, we put skylight in you can see the skylight there um, we also painted um, some of the walls um, in our kind of NHS green colour that we've got as part of our trust colours um, we put some murals up, so nature murals, um, uh, a view through a forest on one wall. We also had one in the waiting area, so that, that area was a bit more friendly. The skating boards were black <laughs> in the old room, which is really bad for dementia patients. Um, so we made those, um, so those grey, we've added a dementia friendly clock to the room as well. Um, so that project cost around about £9,000 to get all of those things put in. Um, I actually took our charity board, who are our, because we're a corporate trustee, that's our trust board as well. I took those members to see that project recently on a walk around. And honestly, the difference that's made on a daily basis to the huge number of patients that come through that room. And I mean, we did it really for dementia, dementia patients to make the room less scary. Um, we're very good at doing this in a lot of our paediatric um, wards and making things nice for our kids, but actually, um, this will have benefits not just for dementia patients, but for any um, adult patient going into that room. I mean, I, I actually love visiting that room and <laughs> going in. If I'm ever in the area, I'll drag someone in to go and have a look at it because it's a really friendly, lovely room to go into. And actually that project could be replicated across some of our other rooms as well. Um, the fourth project is our butterfly end of life resources. So we've got a lead palliative care nurse um, within the trust who's absolutely inspirational in terms of her approach to our palliative and end of life care. What she didn't have was a great deal of extra budget or resource to be providing um, resources for families that are facing that in our in our hospital. So um, this project was centered around um, kind of resources that, could, you know, writing paper, pads for family to write things, anything that could be keepsakes. So um, they do locks of hairs, things like that. So um, property bags as well with the butterfly resource signage so that um, staff and others can be aware that there's an end of life patient um, in a particular room or an area. Um, so it just it's just it just items to really help those last moments in our hospital. We're a large acute hospital, so obviously, you know, we do have a, a number of deaths on site. So we just we you know anything we can do to make that process better for the families in particular that are coming in. Um, that was the, those resources. They were launched actually just um, a couple of months ago. So they did a huge launch, reached out to lots of different um, areas of the, of the hospital. They've done other things like um, on our bed view, there's a there's a tick box. They've trained staff now and have been able to tick the box to um, be able to and, um, email to request 
these information from our family liaison team. So it's kind of a whole project, there's the whole bit of organisation behind it, but it's going to make such a difference to um, our patients and their families. So if we go on to the next slide, please. Um, our fifth project that came forward were items for an infant feeding room. So we've got an inpatient room on our maternity um, on our maternity floor, which was used for COVID swabbing during COVID. So it was an inpatient room, then it got taken over for COVID swabbing. And actually, um, our breastfeeding nurse, um, we've got a whole feeding team that are actually absolutely inspirational in our hospital. She decided she would commandeer that room before it got taken over again. She, uh, she managed to get in and take over the room. Um, but she didn't have um, things like a really good chair for women to sit on to feed. She really wanted to put a TV on the wall so that they could do training for staff around breastfeeding and also information videos for mothers. So she wanted a TV. Um, we've got these um, seats you can see in that photo. We've got window seats. Um, she wanted to just put some cushioning down so that um, people could sit on the window as well. Um, and also we're um, that part of the hospital is south facing. We face right out to the Solent, so it gets really hot. So we put some film on there to make the room just a bit more comfortable in terms of the heat that comes in. Um, so that room is now a very, very, it's a dedicated infant feeding room. They can take mothers in there to feed. Mothers can go in there away from their bedside. It's a really nice facility to have. So it's, um, so it's kind of enhancing that care. They also um, ask for a bit of funding as you walk into our maternity department on the left hand side, there was an area I wish I've got, I should have put a photo of this one actually. Um, so mothers coming back for, for checks um, with their babies would just be sat in between a couple of filing cabinets. This probably happens in a number of places in the truck. Um, there'd be a, there's like an old chair there and they're kind of nestled in between all these old filing things. So we um, we gave them a bit of money as well to fund a nicer reception area. So we've they cleared out all the stuff from that area. They've now got a couple of really nice reception seats. They've got a table, they put water out for mothers and um, they've got a nice little plant. They've got, and they've got some notice boards, which we funded as well, which have got information on feeding and what they can expect from their appointment. So that's really enhanced, not just that feeding room, but also the area that mothers come to in our hospital when they're coming in for checks. And um, the sixth project is a VR headset. So virtual reality within our paediatric department. We had a couple of headsets previously, which still are in use and floating around the department. This gave us a chance to lease um, a much more um, advanced headset, which has um, a tablet attached, which means that the parents can also see what the child is watching. So the headsets are really important. Um, they've become a really important part of our kind of patient experience for, for children in our unit, particularly when they're having procedures such as stitches, things like that. So they, it just takes them into a completely different world. Um, sometimes children are obviously so nervous about some of these procedures, they, they may have to, you know, eventually sometimes they have to go under general anaesthetic, but actually this tablet does take away some of the tablet and the headset take away some of that, um, some of that nervousness. Um, actually, it was being used in the unit yesterday when I was up there, it's used on a, on a daily basis. Um, so that was a great project for us to be able to fund. We've um, we have leased it for a year. But they're looking. They've come back actually to. We've repeated this process. They've come back for for more funding. But it gives us um, it gives us the kind of um, information, monitoring, and evaluation that we need to then apply for perhaps other grants to be able to fund some of these things going forward. So we've now got the evidence and we've got the feedback from staff and patients on this about how helpful it was. So hopefully we'll be able to fund that into the future. So walking jackets, previously um, moving and handler, handling trainers in our um, hospital didn't have any walking jackets to use with hoists at all. There were none existed. So um, these are, you know, it's a new bit of kit that we've been able to bring into the trust. Um, obviously massively improve the rehabilitation of our patients. Um, again, this one in terms of looking at kind of a cost saving, um, a revenue saving, these can, um, as a rehabilitation, re rehabilitation tool, reduce patients' length of stay in hospital. So we know how much it is um, for a patient to stay in a bed as an inpatient per day. So any, any innovation that we can have which reduces that length of stay, not only obviously increases the experience of our patients if they get to go home earlier, but it has a, you know, it has a positive impact on the trust in terms of that. We have um, a hugely busy hospital year. We've got 
you know, large numbers of people coming through our emergency department, more than we've probably ever experienced previously. So, um, you know, being able to keep that flow, any project that can keep that flow moving of patients, getting them better, getting them out of the hospital is obviously what we want for them, but it just means that we can, um, we can use those better state spaces and maximise our hospital capacity. The last project here is patient bus stops. Now, we've had to suspend this project. Um, at the time we went to pitch, we um, had the areas to do it, but we've now got um, uh, kind of, we call it our next patient. So there's parts of the, the ward which were going to be used for patient bus stops, but are you being used to um, keep patients before they come into um, a bed space? It's a project that um, I think we will be able to um, do in the future potentially. Um, but patient bus stops, again, um, this was brought to us by our older persons, medicine wards, is something that has been done in other trusts, but never been done in ours. Um, you know, it just gives um, a kind of identifiable area within the ward where you have the bus stop, you have a little um, timetable and you have some seating. It just is somewhere for you to take a patient, particularly patients that um, may have dementia. It's a, it's a familiar site. It's somewhere where... Um, you know, patients go if they're disorientated, it provides an area also for patients potentially to wait for discharge or other appointments in the hospital. So it's just, they were gonna be dotted about some of our older person's medicine ward. So it's worked really well in other trusts. Um, we'd love to replicate that here, but we just need to wait until we can find the um, space on the estate. Um, so next slide, please. There we go. Um, so obviously, as I've mentioned, the structure of this process meant that we could invite staff from across the hospital to bring forward ideas, which we would never have necessarily been aware of otherwise. Um, as I've said, it's clear from the staff pitching, they had a dream or a vision for a long time. Um, and, you know, the estates projects were probably slightly harder to implement, but some of them were literally with the walking jackets as a case of, great, here you can have a grant, go ahead and buy those jackets. Um, so as a result, the Dragon's funding pot will support, well, it's actually the seven projects, but the, the cost was approximately 50 to 55,000. We went slightly over budget on the day with the walking jackets. They only wanted one of each size, but the Dragons were so excited. They said, oh, buy two of each size. So they, they broke my budget on the day, those execs, but there we go. Um, so we went slightly over, but still, um, you know, still a great result for those projects. So um, of the other projects, we, we think if there's a, another further rate that will receive funding. Uh, we've looked at as a designated ones. We've also got a League of Friends here as well, who we went to, um, and they've recently agreed to fund part, um, part funding of one of the other projects. Um, the other thing that it did for the charity, but it could also do this for a trust finance team, is to give you a list of things that are ideas for the future. So one of the things that we struggle with as Ports of Hospitals charity is we don't necessarily have a ready shopping list of, of projects that we can fund, but now we do have you know some things that we know if we got if we managed to get a, a grant opportunity come up or there was suddenly a pot of funding we'd apply for we know we've got things that we we can do um so that's that's really good and also there were projects that we just wouldn't as a charity have been able to afford but we could highlight them um to our estates team to our commercial team to our procurement team to other parts of the hospital that might be able to potentially help those areas of the hospital with their projects um, the feedback from staff was overwhelmingly positive, even when we were saying no to them, but they were still really complimentary about the process and about the way we were doing it. Um, we've got obviously great news stories um, that we can now use to tell um, supporters about how their money has been helping. Um, so they give us proof of how donations can make a difference and will support any of our future fundraising efforts. We had some really nice feedback as well um, from our exec staff and patient and a patient as well. So our Penny Emma, our chief exec, um, had been on Twitter to say she loved the approach that we've taken to inviting ideas from the teams to investing in improving patient and staff experience. Um, so obviously she's really pleased about the engagement we got. Liz Ricks is our chief nurse, um, so she was one of the dragons. She pledged to be part of the amazing experience for them to see the staff come forward. Um, a patient here, Colin Collins, one of our kind of longer term renal patients, a fabulous inspirational initiative that's indicative of the talent both in the charity, but also the trust should be copied, deserves publicity and, and certainly make, motivates him, which is great. And then just a member of staff who'd read um, some of the schemes. So wanted to say after reading how wonderful it is 
these useful and practical schemes will be supported. I'm sure there's many other presented, I will support, but really like the idea. Charities working with the workforce to support, support small but important improvements to patient and staff experience. Um, so we had some really, you know, really positive feedback from across the trust. I had execs messaging me saying, Kate, I want to be on the panel next year. I've heard how good it was and how inspirational, because I think it just opened people's eyes to um, the kind of level of engagement that our staff had as well with projects to enhance patient care. Um, I mean, it also, as a charity, had a really positive impact on our kind of uh, brand as a charity. So there's 9,000 staff here. We're a small charity team of six. Anything we can do to get our kind of message across to the staff, not only for them to know that we're there supporting them and their initiatives, but also, you know, for them to know that if a patient comes to them and says, oh, I'd, I'd love to say thank you for the care I've received, they know they can say, we've got a charity, you can give. These are some of the things that they do. Um, so it, it's really positive for us in that in that respect as well. Um, so next slide, please. Um, and so my chief financial officer actually, uh, I think, messaged um, a slide similar to what we've got here around to a number of people. And that's how one NHS finance um, came uh, came kind of across the idea and asked whether we would we would put it through for um, a peer review just to see whether the innovation could be part of the one finance innovations. And obviously, it, we were successful in that. So the peer reviewer said a wonderful innovation, um, spending donations kindly given in a way that staff um, no patients will get the most benefit from. Um, so we obviously had a specific challenge. So the idea executed addresses that challenge and delivered better value for the organisation. Um, engage colleagues across the trust for the benefit of patients and utilise charitable funds. So good news story all round. So it worked really well. Um, we have repeated this year. Um, of what I would say is that the engagement has been less. We didn't get as many projects this year. Uh, we had greater detail. So we had a lot more detail for the projects that we have um, that we have had come forward just in the process of sorting and shortlisting at the moment. So we will still be able to fund some really, really good projects. I think as the idea evolves, I think it would probably be wise for us to have an ongoing pot available rather than doing it all just once annually, because we do sometimes have points in the year where staff come to us with really good ideas that don't have a charitable fund. And we think, oh, God, if Dragon's Den was open right now, this would be perfect. So I think what we'll probably try to do is have a kind of rolling programme of support that we could, you know, we could allow for each year. Once the pot's gone each year, it's gone. Um, but, you know, we, we have been able to, to repeat this and we will be able to fund more projects um, this year. Um, I think also it's a great opportunity for us to work with our patient experience teams as well. Um, they often run, um, they're kind of running patient ambassador programmes with staff in the hospital. So there's kind of a few other link ups that I think we can do. Um, in order to um, kind of expand on this um, and to keep inviting some good ideas from our colleagues. And obviously we hope as a result that we will get more unrestricted um, funding because it's a great way of us being able to, to show support across, across the hospital site. Um, but as I said, I think there's probably parts of this that could be executed in a slightly different way. If it's not just a charitable fund, I think, um, you know, you could use it as potentially a SIP innovation from people because you'd be amazed, I think, at the kind of ideas that staff will come forward with and the things that they can they can see. And if, you know, if they've got potentially a pot of money to help problem solve something, that um, I think there could be real benefits of that. And we all know how important it is to, um, to be protecting budgets and to making some of those cost savings at the moment. So um, that's the, I think that's all the slides. I don't think there was another one. Um, has anyone got any questions? We've got about 20 minutes or so where you can ask anything you might want to. Hopefully that's given you a really good overview. I've stunned you all into silence, that's amazing. <laughs> But I can't see any hands up. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. Look, sorry, yeah, I'm looking for the little hand. Oh, there it is. But anyway, <laughs> uh, just to say thank you. That was a great presentation and really, really a uh, lot of uh, thought. I think probably um, as with many others, the biggest struggle we have is 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 that getting ideas from from yeah. the staff and how to uh, how to spend. I mean. We do something similar. I, I work at the Walton Centre up in Liverpool, so it's a specialist trust, a much smaller than what, what you have to deal with. But it, it's just having that, um, the ideas coming through, but also 
then that what we refer to as a project pipeline to have yeah. from a fundraising point of view it's almost like two elements to it isn't it is that spending what we already have but then having being able to encourage people to get on board and fundraise for something specific so um so we've done something similar to that not 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 as full as but done the kind of um going out and asking an audit thing but we've asked for bigger projects so i think mm -hmm. the way you've said you did it from sort of a thousand up to that's given me an idea to actually relax the um ask a little bit and make it smaller as well as see yeah. what comes through so uh yeah no thank yeah. you for that it's really good oh thank you i mean actually even this so in this year's one um a project that we have had come forward um I mean, it's simple things like assistance cutlery. So we know we've got an issue with some nutrition amongst some of our patients and, you know, food being put in front of some patients and staff not necessarily having a huge amount of time. So, you know, some patients will need to be fed, but for others, they have the ability, but they need that bit of extra. So there's just small little things like that. I mean, that project would probably, I think that's about 2,000, 2,500 to get a whole load of cutlery in and boxes and mark them up and everything to put across some, all of our wards. Um, that could make a huge difference to those patients. It can make a huge difference to nutrition. It can make a huge difference to potentially their recovery time and how quickly they can get out of the, you know, get out of hospital to go home. So it's um it's not something I, you know, we would ever think of necessarily <laughs> in our day to day jobs, but they're there, they're living it, they know there's a problem and they've got a solution. So it's really good for them to know that that we're here and that we can support. I think it was it's been great for staff morale in for the area certainly that have had a bit yeah. of funding and been able to do something i think um sorry I'm, I'm hogging it now but i think one of the things we uh, i find when i speak to to staff is this there's that balance as well isn't it because we do when, whenever they feel sometimes i've had the feedback on well you know it's no point because when when mm -hmm. we ask for something we we don't really get it but the kind of asks you do tend to get is if they've been knocked back by something from the trust and they think or they think that it you know it's a petty cash fund and the charity can just fund it so yeah. we are saying no to things you know when they they come and want you know pens for a stand whatever it is yeah. so they feel yeah. they get knocked back all the time yeah. but it's because exactly. it's the the wrong kind of um yeah questions coming through or requests coming through so yeah. it's, it's it's a big sort of communication and learning thing as well so people understand what the charity does which yeah, yeah we've been the same we've um we were spending a lot of money on pens collectively you know all, all healthcare support work a day we were getting all those requests and and easter I, eggs have, yeah <laughs> so, yeah so we have we have pushed back on a lot of that now because actually what we want to be doing is funding much more strategic innovative strategic innovation that's going to make that difference and like that i mean that dementia friendly extra room oh my god the difference that has made to that team to those patients it's just huge and it you know nine thousand pounds not a small amount of money but you know uh, for people to see that and to know that they can they can replicate that as well in different areas it's, it's, it's been really really good any other questions from anyone what i'll do is i'll just put my um email address in the chat um and if you did have anything that pops into your head later, um, or you just think, oh, you know, I didn't mention that, well, you know, how did I handle um, maybe certain other things, you can um, please do get in touch. That's my uh, that's my email address that's just gone in there. Um, and yeah, so if there is anything else you needed to know or you felt that you hadn't got enough information on please do feel free to get in touch i don't know whether there's anything else from one finance if you guys wanted to say anything uh no nothing from me great thank you um so brilliant i think the slides are being shared it's going to be recorded so if there's anyone else in your teams that couldn't make it or would like to um like to listen back please do share it with them um and we all check you know i think some of you probably work in finance teams some of you might be from the charities but please do get in touch if you um if you if you would like to and i'm happy to share anything else you might need great thank you i'll give you some time back <laughs> thank you 
Brilliant. Thanks for